Well, it is my pleasure to join you again, and this time I will be talking about how to integrate human caring theory into nursing education. However, I'm going to frame it as really how to consider a caring science curriculum, which is exactly the same thing, but I'm using different terminology, both about theory-guided caring science curriculum, but also caring science as a curriculum guide. Now, what do we mean by what is a caring science curriculum, or what is a definition of curriculum? Actually, the true definition of curriculum is really the relationship between faculty and students, between staff and students. So when we think about content and about all the facts that we have to teach and all the learning that has to occur, if we do that in a sterile, remote, robotic way without being attentive to creating an environment for learning, which is based upon caring relationships and kindness and loving kindness, as we know from the theory, then you can ha actually create practitioners who do not know how to translate theory into practice it, it, for patients. So what happens in the classroom is happening in the clinical. So if we don't find ways to introduce caring curriculum into nursing education, we will find that we're only teaching technical competencies. And so a caring science curriculum, a theory-guided human caring curriculum, has to pay as much attention to helping students to learn about the phenomena of human caring, the language of human caring, the practice of human caring, as they do for technology. So the competencies of caring, or what I would refer to as literacy of caring, has to be balanced with the technology. So in this model, you could actually begin to think about all those skills labs that we have and think about creatively how would you reframe those skills labs that are all focused on technology and reframe them so they're arts labs like teaching about the artistry of our humanity, how to be present, how to implement and live out these 10 Caritas processes within a given moment in the classroom as well as in the clinical setting as part of a new laboratory model of learning about our humanity. So this too is part of a very subtle but significant transition to move from a content-driven curriculum which then is very sterile and is really based upon giving people data. And in this understanding, we begin to reveal that giving people knowledge or giving people data or, or information is not the same as knowledge. Information is not knowledge. Content is not knowledge per se. Content is just facts. Content like that is not necessarily knowledge. And knowledge, giving people knowledge, is not necessarily understanding. So understanding is not also taking it to the level of integrating it into the personal practice. So it becomes the student's knowledge, personal knowledge for them, that they take this content that you've given them, these facts, all this understanding, but take it into and make it there so they can live it out and give voice and language to it. That's a whole different educational model of new forms of pedagogy. So in this kind of curriculum, we begin to introduce what's referred to as emancipatory pedagogies. You might recreate your classroom so you have a circle instead of a big auditorium with all the lines and the rows lined up where people do not see each other. And some of the foundational work in caring science curriculums has been identified by my colleague and scholar, uh, beautiful person who, uh, with whom I've worked, Dr. Nell Noddings, and she was the Dean of Education at Stanford University. And she began to do work on caring and really the ethics of caring from a very perspective of, based upon a caring ethic and relationships. And in her work, she described about four major ingredients. If you're an educator and you would like to introduce caring science, as a framework, there's certain principles and guidance that you can begin to pay attention to. One of them, she says, of course, requires practice. 
So when you are introducing a caring science curriculum, in the classroom, you create an environment where the students are practicing caring and the 10 Caritas process among themselves, the way they respond to each other, the way they treat each other, the way in which you create a community of caring within the classroom. So you're practicing in the classroom what you're also going to be able to take out and translate directly into clinical practice. The second ingredient that she identified has to do with modeling. So we always hear about role modeling. But in this model, we're not talking about role modeling in the sense of trying to get somebody to be like somebody else and role model to be like another person. But this is the educator's approach to modeling that helps that student, that other, to become their best self, model their best self of who they are the authenticity of their being and becoming rather than trying to be like somebody else. And this takes a very special way of being in relation. You would actually live out some of the Caritas processes so that you can actually be authentic with a student in helping them to find their best way to model themselves to learn to practice caring. Another ingredient of the caring curriculum that's been identified by Noddings has to do with what she referred to as authentic dialogue. We can give all these facts and all this content and all this knowledge, but if there are not opportunities for students to process that knowledge, to have authentic dialogue and, and understand that any question that anybody needs to ask, it's really like a sacred act that any question is sacred and we need to create space where students can feel safe and ask questions about any parts of what they don't understand. And then you have an authentic dialogue among themselves and each other. We learn from each other. And we're doing this in a practice setting where we're actually learning caring and living caring in the practice of the classroom as well as what can be translated directly into practice. Likewise, the last aspect of what she identified, which is a beautiful concept and is one of the one I love the most. She says, we have a responsibility to affirm or confirm for the student their highest ethical ideal for themselves, even if they can't see it for themselves at the moment. So if you have a student who's struggling or who's suffering, they might be really hard on themselves, but if you can help to hold them in their highest ethical ideal of who they are and who they wish to become, it actually can be transformative for them, and it's a life-changing event. This would, too, be a, an example of a caring moment. The caring moments need to be included in the classroom as they are in a patient nurse situation in the clinical setting. So anything you teach in the education is going to be transferred directly over. If students are exposed to a very authoritarian professional distancing model in education for the teaching and learning, they're going to go right into clinical setting and start doing that authoritarian professional distancing with patients and be this objective person rather than be authentically present living out the 10 Caritas processes that flow from education to practice as one art act. This is referred to as praxis. So in my work of caring science and the theory of human caring in education, in practice, in administration, in policy, all of this has to do with really living this out in an entirely different way. As one art act, it's referred to in my latest book as praxis. Praxis meaning the knowing, being, and doing is one art act in that moment with another human being. And praxis, the concept of praxis, is informed practice. It's informed by your values. It's informed by your consciousness. It's informed by your intentionality. It is informed by your theories and your approach to knowledge and what counts as knowledge. Empirical knowledge alone is not enough knowledge for us to understand and teach. We have to allow for all ways of knowing, as I've mentioned earlier. So this whole transition from a traditional content-driven curriculum to an authentic human caring theory-guided curriculum is transformative for the faculty, for the staff, for the culture, as, for, as well as for the students. This allows for these emancipatory pedagogies, which brings in art and humanities 
and film and all sorts of alternative ways of knowing that we have not systematically built into nursing education. The other thing I would like to just emphasize in terms of the framework for a caring science curriculum has to do with how we begin to understand the discipline of nursing, which is helping to inform our education as well as our practice. The discipline is what holds the values for the profession. The discipline is what those eternal, timeless values that cannot be substituted for. These, the discipline is what holds the theories. It doesn't have to be my theory. It has multiple theories in nursing are guiding our practice. But if you're using a theory in education or you're using a theory in practice, you're going to be changing your practice because you're going to be able to see things differently. You're going to be able to do things differently, whether it's in the classroom or whether it's in the clinical setting. So the other part of this transition is then to bring in multiple ways of knowing. For example, you can take any assignment, any clinical assignment, any medical diagnosis, any treatment model that needed to be attended to for the learning, and you can invite students to explore it through their personal ways of knowing, through their intuitive ways of knowing, through our art and aesthetic ways of knowing, through empirical, technical, medical ways of knowing that phenomena, or you can have them explore it in any of these expanded ways of what I refer to as expanded epistemologies. And then it opens up an entirely new way of us addressing the human dimensions, humanity, all those vicissitudes of human existence that patients are going through, students are going through, and we have the parallel that what's happening in the education is likewise happening in the clinical setting. They're basically one in the thing and the same, but we need to have the structure and the understanding of how the discipline is informing our work, how our theories are informing our educational structure, and how it influences indirectly and directly into the clinical setting. So I hope this is a way to summarize the importance of understanding how theory, how the discipline of nursing is, is and can and must start informing our education so we can change practice. Thank you very much for your time.